what are the essential skills to be a good data scientist? Well, I asked 15 data scientists across different companies and different industries exactly what they think. And let's just say I was pretty surprised at their responses and we're gonna break them down in this video. Let's get into it. To avoid wasting your time, here are the top 10 skills reported back from those 15 data scientists. What I find pretty interesting is the mix of technical skills like maths and coding with soft skills like curiosity and communication. Personally, this makes a lot of sense because as a data scientist, your main job is to basically find value in the data. So you look through the data, gather insights, and find things about the business that you know may not be obvious if you didn't look at the data. You'll then present your findings and knowledge to senior management and stakeholders who could then use that information you've given them to make business decisions. It sounds so simple, but due to the volume and vastness of data, it's often very hard to know exactly where to look. You're basically looking for a needle in a haystack. Fortunately, there's tools and technologies that increase your chances of finding this information. And let's now go over the top five in reverse order. SQL is joined fourth on the list and for good reason. SQL is the language of data and I don't think I've ever seen a data science or even data job advertised that doesn't have some sort of SQL component. In this big data world, analyzing millions of rows of data on Excel just doesn't really cut it. And SQL makes this whole process really seamless. Fortunately, for those of you at the start of your data science journey, learning SQL is a lot easier than learning programming languages like Python or C++. This is because SQL is a lot smaller language because it's tailor-made to dealing with relational databases. So the syntax is not as big as these other languages and there's a lot less to learn overall. In my opinion, you're pretty much set if you know kind of all the basics like aggregate functions, joins and common expression tables. Again, just learning the basics will make you proficient in most entry level data science jobs. I have a whole separate video explaining the exact SQL knowledge you need in order to become a data scientist. And I'll link it on screen here in case you want to check it out. And if you want to learn SQL, then I recommend LearnSQL.com who are kindly sponsoring this video. LearnSQL.com have over 70 courses on the website in a variety of SQL flavors, such as Stand SQL, PostgreSQL, MS SQL Server, and MySQL. Every course has hands-on exercises solving real-world problems, and it's entirely web-based, so you don't need to worry about any additional setup that you may need. One of my favorite features of the platform is their initial SQL skill assessment. This will do a basic test to measure your SQL abilities. It will then recommend your content at your right level and also areas that you can improve upon. So it's suitable from whether you're a complete beginner or a seasoned expert. They have recently redesigned the whole website to make the learning experience that much better. And they even have learners from top companies like Amazon, Uber, and Apple. You can start using LearnSQL.com today completely for free using their free trial, which requires no credit card information. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check them out. No surprise here, Python is joined fourth on the list. Python and SQL are kind of like the power couple of the data science, machine learning, and AI world, because pretty much any job in that space will require you to know both languages. A lot of the machine learning ecosystem and libraries are specifically designed and maintained for Python use. And like SQL, I've rarely seen a job advertised for a data scientist that doesn't specify Python as a requirement. However, unlike SQL, Python is a lot harder to learn because it's a bigger language, it's more general purpose, and it's applied in different areas of the tech space. When it comes to learning Python, I recommend just taking a course on the basic syntax, then learning some of the more data science libraries like NumPy, Matplotlib, Pandas, Scikit-learn. Then after you got kind of all that basic fundamentals down, I'll then immediately move on to creating projects because creating projects and applying yourself is really how you learn anything. I again have a whole separate video explaining exactly how I would learn Python again. I'll link your screen here in case you want to check it out. As a data scientist, you need to be familiar with machine learning. That's not to say that you should be able to derive transformers mathematically from first principles, but you should have a basic awareness understanding of a variety of machine learning algorithms, particularly in the supervised learning and unsupervised learning space. What you're after is basically understanding kind of what algorithms apply to what problem and what are the different advantages and disadvantages of each algorithm in different areas. You should also be familiar with concepts like overfitting, high parameter tuning, 
gradient descent and regularization. These are kind of concepts that surround the best practices about building a machine learning model. So be aware of these and understand how to apply them in practice. Machine learning is a massive field and there's constant developments happening, particularly now with this whole AI LLM boom. So it can feel quite hard to keep up and you shouldn't feel the need to keep up with everything. But obviously having some sort of natural curiosity which was a top 10 skill is really helpful. And in my opinion, machine learning is probably one of the most interesting parts of the data science field. So it's quite easy to be naturally curious about things going on in the space. The second most important skill voted by the 15 data scientists was actually a soft one and it's communication. But like I said in the beginning, communication is almost half the job because let's say you do this amazing machine learning model or you do this great analysis and find great insight. If you don't tell anyone about it and tell it in a good way, then no one's really going to know your work or know what you mean or what you've really found. I like to think of data scientists as a linchpin between the tech and business sides and because we kind of have knowledge of both areas we can effectively communicate business understanding into tech requirements and vice versa and that's really powerful but to do that you need to know both sides of the coin you need to know all the technical things like coding maths python etc but you also need to understand what the business wants and how to communicate your results to the business to people who are not technical so it makes sense why communication is such an important skill to many data scientists the problem is communication is a very very challenging skill to really master and it's a skill that you'll constantly be improving for many many years. The best way I found to improve my communication is just to volunteer at every opportunity to present. I started writing a blog which improved my written communication and also I started making YouTube videos which has verbally improved my communication skills when it comes to like kind of speaking about complex topics. There are of course many other ways to improve your communication abilities but you have to go and seek them. They don't just come to you naturally. The key thing with communication is that the more you communicate the more visible you'll be with your peers and inside your company which really helps particularly when you're going for a promotion. Finally, we reached the most important skill, which is maths. If I was doing the survey, I would also put maths as my number one skill because the way I like to think of it is that Python and SQL are tools they use to get insights and information from data, but you kind of need to know what you're looking for. And the way you know what you're looking for is through maths because having understanding of maths and stats builds kind of that knowledge or that way of thinking and intuition in your brain. When you look at a problem, you immediately know where to go or what to look for. And you only get that through studying things like maths and building that kind of thinking about approaching a problem. I often get asked the question, how much maths do I really need? And the answer is actually quite simple. You need an understanding in linear algebra, calculus, and stats to roughly a high school level. Obviously, the more maths you know, the better, but that kind of baseline is really sufficient for an entry-level data scientist, provided you kind of know those things very well and you can apply them to different problems. That level of understanding will allow you to understand topics like gradient descent, basic statistics, and eigenvalues, which are used throughout industry and probably then the more hardest parts for you to master. And in reality, you never actually sit down and do real maths. You more kind of have this mathematical knowledge to gain intuition and understanding behind the algorithms, which really helps when you're developing them. And like I said, of course, the more maths you know, the better you'll be and probably the higher you'll reach in your career, particularly if you want to go into your research or become kind of like a principal data scientist where your role is all about technical delivery. But for those entry level positions, that high school level maths is probably more than sufficient in most cases. I again have a whole separate video explaining the exact maths you need as a data scientist. I'll link your screen here in case you want to check it out. If you enjoyed this video, and you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Dictionary Data. I send it every Monday morning, and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check it out.